Greetings dear aspirants, welcome to today's current affairs session of Civilspedia. The topics that we are going to discuss today are the schemes of Ministry of Human Resource and Development, about the scheduled tribes of Sikkim and about the National Companies Law Appellate Tribunal and the Security Exchange Board of India and the Mammals of India which, are, which is an online repository under the prelims topic. And about our time begins now, roadmap to transit quickly to a near zero carbon economy under the editorial topic of the day. So let's start with the first prelim topic, the schemes of the Ministry of Human Resource and Development. So there were two news regarding this particular topic. First thing is Impress and Spark. Portals for both these schemes have been recently launched by the Minister of Human Resource and Development Mr. Prakash Shabdekar. And the second news is PM in a conclave addressing to the IT professionals, especially the cognizant employees, substantiated about this particular human resource development scheme of educating the school children about the voluntary school education program. So, what are the key words that we need to see when we are studying about the schemes of Ministry of Human Resources and Development? First thing is about the scheme. Second thing is the impact area in whichever field of the which uh, levels of education, be it primary, secondary or tertiary. Second thing, uh, the third thing is the agency which is either implementing or coordinating this particular scheme. So let's start with Impress and Spark from this particular news. So portals were uh, recently launched for these both schemes. Impress is impactful policy research in social sciences. So the impact area is governance and the society. And the implementing agency here is the Indian Council of Social Sciences and Research. These are the three things that you need to know from the prelims point of view. And for this park, it is a scheme for promotion of academic and research collaboration. So basically, the ministry is going to fund the collaboration, collaborative research with uh, of the Indian institutes with the global institutes identified under this particular network, Global Institute of uh, Initiative of Academic Networks, nothing but the GN scheme. So here the impact area is the Indian centric researchers in the fields of science, technologies, social sciences and humanities. And the coordinating institution here would be the Indian Institute of Technology, Kadakpur, located in the state of West Bengal. The third scheme is Vidyanjali. It is a school volunteer program and this particular topic was asked in the 2017 prelims exam. So the question is, what is the purpose of Vidyanjali Yojana? To enable the for, uh, famous foreign education institutions to open their campuses in India was one option. Second thing is to increase the quality of education by taking help from the private sector and the community. This was the second. And the third thing is providing monetary co contributions for developing the infrastructure in the primary and the secondary schools. So the correct answer here is only the second option. So it is basically a school volunteer program for classes between 1 to 8 and it is implemented under the aegis of Sarva Siksha Abhiyan and it is open for participation by both the Indian citizens and the NRIs or the Indian diaspora who are located uh, up away from the Indian country. So what kind of questions that we can expect is questions on either questions on these lines. So from Impress they can ask if uh, they are providing any monetary benefits to the researchers or maybe if it is from uh, the higher education sector or the schools, they can give questions like uh, what are the schemes that are applicable for higher education and give options like Impress, Spark and Vidyanjali. So we, the correct answer here is Impress and the Spark. So we can expect questions on these lines. With this we are moving on to our next prelims topic, the scheduled tribes of Sikkim. So then and there, always in the news, we get this topic that LNT seats representation is required in the state legislative assembly of Sikkim. So what is this L and what is this T? We will be studying about it. So some of the key words when you are studying about this, uh, the scheduled tribes of Sikkim is the articles 
342 and 332 this is about the notification of the scheduled tribes by the president notification and this is the reservation for sts and scs in the state legislative assemblies and about the scheduled tribes of sikkim and the representation of the scheduled tribes which will be studying so the news is the siltak reposes confidence in the uh, chief minister of sikkim to arrange quota for L lnt community so first thing is who are the tribes of sikkim only four tribes are notified as per the constitution of india based on a government order in 1978 lepchas and bhutias were identified as a scheduled tribes of sikkim and in 2002 amendment limbu and tamang were also identified as the tribes of sikkim so article 342 states that the president is empowered to notify the scheduled tribes of any particular state in consultation with the governor this is one point or a parliament by law can either include or exclude the list of scheduled tribes in a particular state this is all about article 342 so article 342 is exclusively for the scheduled tribes and 341 is for the scheduled castes so this will be easy to remember and the next issue is the reservation of seats for the scheduled tribes of sikkim now in 2002 both these tribes limbu and tamang who were identified as scheduled tribes are still not given reservation which is a constitutional right for any scheduled tribe to be represented in a particular state legislative assembly if their population is of considerable size so article 332 exclusively deals with that about the reservation of seats for the scheduled tribes of the states in case of sikkim total seats is 32 out of which 19 is for general and 12 for the sts and scs 2 and sangha are basically monks who reside in the state of sikkim now this limbu and tamang tribes want share either five seats in this 12 given for the sts or they are planning to increase the seats from 32 to 40 still a result has not yet been reached in this particular regard this is all you need to know in this particular topic with this we are moving on to our next topic the national companies law appellate tribunal and the securities and the exchange board of india why it was in news is the enclat has stated the resolution plan for the assam company based on the sebi plea and this news is not of our concern only these key words you need to consider for prelims point of view enclat and the sebi so let's study about the enclat enclat is nothing but the national companies law national companies law appellate tribunal appellate tribunal so companies appellate tribunal all these three you need to consider now a tribunal can be formed as per article 323b for other cases article 323a is for only the administrative tribunals which can be formed by an act of parliament but 323b is the other tribunals which also includes the labor and the industry disputes which can be formed either by an act of the parliament or act of the state this is all you need to keep in mind when it comes to tribunal now with respect to this particular tribunal the national company law appellate tribunal it was formed as per the national companies act of 2013 along with this national company law tribunal it was formed in the year 2016 may so it is an appellate authority as the name clearly tells now this national company law tribunal has original jurisdiction so tribunals are basically uh, dispute settlement mechanisms where uh, uh, the parties need not go to court for getting solved their cases but they can just rely on tribunals to get 
uh, their cases easily solved with speedy disposal of cases. Now it is an appellate authority. This you need to keep in mind. Hearing appeals against the decisions, directions or the orders passed by three institutions. First is the National Company Law Tribunal. Second thing is the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. This was included in December 2016. And the third thing is the Competition Commission of India which was included in May 2017. This is all you need to keep it in mind. Let's move on to next topic. The uh, and one more thing under this NCLAT is it's a quasi judicial body. Quasi judicial body. Now, if a question in prelims comes, if it is a quasi judicial body, you can very well attempt this question. Next topic here is the Securities Exchange Board of India. So, it is a statutory body established as per the SEBI Act of 1992. So, it deals with the bonds, equities and the derivatives market, derivatives market. So basically it acts as a regulator for the securities market and security market comprises of all these three, the equities, bonds and the derivatives. And it protects the interests of the investors in the securities and it promotes the development of the overall security market. So this is the objective or the functions of the SEBI. This is all you need to know from prelims point of view. With this, we are moving on to our next topic, the mammals of India, which is an online repository. So the key words that you need to know here is the portal, the mammals of India portal about the National Center for Biological Sciences and the recent mammals which was in news. So this particular portal is an online one. It is peer reviewed and it is a freely accessible portal by all the citizens. So all the citizens of India can take part in this particular initiative where they can capture the photographs of the rare mammals that they see in, uh, in any part of the India. For example, if a person sees red zero, if he has spotted it and if, if he has taken a photograph of it, he can share it in this particular portal and there are academicians who will review it and regulate this particular photos and they will make it available to the entire public and it is developed by the National Center for Biological Sciences and about this institute it is a part of Tata Institute of Fundamental Research it's located in Bengaluru and it comes under the Department of Atomic Energy which comes under the Prime Minister's office. This is all you need to know under this particular topic. Now, this was introduced in the previous month in September 2018. But within a month, many recordings have been done and have been uploaded on this particular portal. Some of the animals that have been given in the newspapers are red zero. It is a goat antelope type, neither a goat or an antelope. It looks like a goat as well as an antelope. An Asian golden cat, binturong or the bear cat which actually looks like a bear, but it's a cat and leaf nose bat, wild belly rat and smooth quartered otters. Now, two very unique names are Binturong and Red Zero. So you can just keep this in mind about these animals when for studying for prelims point of view. With this, we are moving on to our main topic. Our time begins now. Roadmap to transit quickly to a new zero carbon economy. So the writers here here I've discussed about the challenges or the threats for India because of the climate change. What are the challenges that we are having and what are the success stories that have been already developed in India to address the climate change, to have a sustainable way of life and what is the way ahead. So they have given some suggestions or roadmap to transit quickly to a near zero carbon economy. So let's start with this particular topic. First thing is, the authors have identified multiple alarms for India on climate change. So they have taken some two or three reports. First thing is the IPCC report on 1.5 degrees Celsius. This has been lastly discussed in our civil speedia videos, the previous videos, you can have a look on it. And next thing is nature climate change report. So it is a journal, nature journals climate change report. So here in this particular IPCC report, they're telling uh, heat waves are more likely to occur in India. So now around 1500 people were killed in the year 2015 in India for, because of heat waves. And the nature climate change report tells that because of the increase of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, India is most likely to suffer because of the increase. And we are also having the nationally determined contributions as a part of this Paris climate deal, but they are too over ambi amb ambitious. 
so we are already deploying some national determined contributions and we, are, and we are working towards it but anyway we cannot reach towards that goal of limiting the increase in the global average mean temperature to 1.5 degrees celsius it is most likely to go beyond 3 to 5 degrees celsius now we also have to take world scenario into our mind first thing is the usa usa has pulled out of the climate treaty the worst next worst is the uk one thing is brexit and if we also take uh, their trade the entire trade sector which includes the aviation and shipping they are the world's largest polluters in that particular sectors and australia brazil it depends entirely on their elections upcoming elections where they will take a stay on whether they will stay in the paris climate deal or whether they are going to pull back from the climate deal and india has taken some good measures towards the clean energy resources and france is also taking some good measures towards developing the renewable energy resources and both these have joined together to form the international solar alliance international solar alliance so we have the worst and we have the best so this is the current world scenario and now the authors have given some two challenges first thing is two complex and interrelated challenges the especially or exclusively for india and the socio economic challenges of india first thing is the two complex and the interrelated challenges our first and foremost challenge is to eradicate poverty still india majority of indians are poor we need to work towards eradicating poverty if you are working towards eradicating poverty which means we need to implement the social sector schemes if you are going to implement social sector schemes they should be climate resilient towards building resilience to climate change they should be climate uh, friendly infrastructure or whatever uh, initiatives that are taken by the government so we need to have a very fine balance between the both this was the one emphasized by the writers Se second thing is the socio economic challenges which are again interrelated first thing is the multi dimensional poverty often in the world scenario india is always being compared with china but china is far ahead in the rankings when compared to india india is lagging behind the rankings this is one point and around 27% of indians are in the poor category or multi dimensionally poor when we are looking into this multi dimensional poverty index and around 19.1% are vulnerable to becoming poor so this is roughly half the population of india around 47 48% roughly half the population of india so this is a very grim scenario and all these people who are vulnerable to becoming poor are on the risk of losing their jobs and also because of the climate change and now they cannot spend towards their health needs also if say if any person from a family is going to become ill then his health needs cannot be taken care by these poor people people are already poor now somebody becomes ill now he has to spend more on that and again he is going to become more poor which means his out of pocket expenditures are going to increase this is the cycle and if climate change is taken into consideration things are going to become even more grim and the economic growth has led to the economic inequality so in the recent uh, uh, economic survey it has been said that jobless growth is seen which means inequality in the economical growth the rich is becoming rich the poor is becoming poor so this is the point emphasized here economic growth leading to economic inequality now there are some success stories which have happened in india and they have discussed it sector wise they have taken energy sector building industry about the community participation and the agriculture so let's start with the energy sector first thing is they have told that bureau of energy efficiency has given a nudge or a push towards labeling of the appliances towards uh, energy conservation those stars which we see and large scale procurement of energy efficient devices because of this we were able to control pollution to some extent second thing is india has an ambitious solar energy target of about 100 gigawatt to be achieved by the year 2002 but it is not possible with a larger electricity grid now solar micro grids which have been initiated in the state of jharkhand 
which has been implemented in the state of Jharkhand in the remotest of villages. Remotest of villages can be emulated to all the villages of Jharkhand and now Jharkhand is looking upon this model. Now we need to know what a solar microgrid is. So in a village there can be lines or rows of houses and they can have solar panels on their rooftops. This, this all can be connected to a solar unit. From here the energy can either be stored in batteries or it can be used for their purposes. This is all about a solar microgrid. So it is basically an energy efficient method and self sufficient method. Both are the advantages of this particular solar microgrid. Next thing is the building industry. Uh, they have taken this usage of natural fiber composite material in the building industry as a success story. And when it comes to community participation, back in the year 2002-2003, Nagaland has implemented this communitization of the public services wherein the village will take all the public services such as education, health into their own hands and they will implement it. And this has given a huge success in this particular state of Nagaland. Second thing is provide provision of uh, the community forest rights to the people living in this Mendaleka village. So it is located in the Gatshiroli district of Maharashtra. Maharashtra. It is close to Maharashtra Chhattisgarh border. So these are very good examples of community participation and these are also being uh, documented in the Vikalt Sangam. Vikalt Sangam. Vikalt is alternative in Hindi and Sangam is confluence. So it is again a website or an initiative to document these alternative uh, energy success stories so that it can be emulated on later levels. And the scholar Harini Nagendra in Nature Journal has also told that India has a long history of sustainable living with the land and the ecology by sustainably using the land resources, natural resources. And next in the field of agriculture, Andhra Pradesh has started this, started this zero budget national farming in their state. So now they are able to save around 2 million tons of carbon dioxide every year. That is, it is their estimated savings. And if this particular uh, concept is being taken to pan India level, then India can save a lot of CO2 emission. So what is the roadmap? They have given multiple roadmaps. Uh, I have comprehended into sector wise and the common roadmaps. So let's see the first sector wise roadmaps. The energy sector, standalone modules for connecting the regular electric grids, especially converting the hydra, uh, hybrid waste to energy and the recycling water plants from where the power is generated and the power generated from the community gardens, all these can be connected to the regular electricity grids. So we need not depend upon a fossil fuel only, we can also depend upon these recyclable resources. So replacing fossil infrastructure, fossil fuel infrastructure with the renewables, not only renewables but also sources such as these and especially in the transport sector, they are emphasizing on walking, cycling and the green vehicles which should be encouraged at the semi-urban areas or suburban areas, also in the peri-urban areas. With the help of green energy, we would be able to achieve less carbon dioxide emissions. So the general roadmaps which they have given us, India's commitment towards the sustainable development goals must expand. So we need to eradicate poverty, so we need development, but the development should be sustainable. So identify successful development approaches with expected climate change impacts in each ecological zone. Based on the ecological zone, they can come up with the development plans. And the natural resources cannot be traded for development activities. This is one point to be noted. Now, if you see Chennai is a very classic example of encroaching the water bodies. Encroaching the water bodies. So Chennai was not able to withstand the 2015 floods. Same is the case of the man-made landslides in the Himalayan states. So these two are the classical examples that the natural resources cannot be traded for the development activities and it has to be sustainable development. It can be possible only through green energy sources and through initiatives such as these and transformational and cross-scale changes must be done but not through scaling up. India is very known for scaling up the technologies 
at initial level it will either be implemented at gram panchayat level say or a district level later it will be expanded after some two or three years but we don't have that much time to cope up with the climate change it should be transformational and cross scale cross sectoral changes and for this the large investments are needed and investments from the outside countries is not possible especially when it comes to climate change because business people are always business oriented so they have proposed to implement a luxury carbon tax that the government should implement a luxury carbon tax which will curb on the non essential consumption and the change should be from within it is not that the foreign nations should push india to act towards climate change but we should ourselves take up our own initiatives towards the climate change so sustainable development goal emphasis is required clean energy and renewable energy and the change should be transformational the speed sdg about the technology and about the speed of implementation so this is the crux of this particular editorial topic with this we are winding up our today's uh, discussion please do like comment and share the video and do subscribe for shankar ias academy channel for latest videos and updates stay focused and motivated thank you